Hi guys, it's uh, John back here with another model inbox review. Today we're looking at an aircraft which I'm probably guessing you've never heard of. Um, and those of you that have heard of it, uh, you must be an aircraft buff. Because this is an aeroplane that I'd never heard of before picking up this model as part of a stash purchase. The aircraft in question is actually the Berezniak Izaev Bi-1. And it was a rocket-propelled interceptor experimental aircraft from the Soviet Union and its main claim to fame is that it was actually the first ever aeroplane to be powered by something other than a piston engine with a propeller that was actually equipped with guns. This aircraft was an experimental uh, sorry, pre-production aircraft that never went to the production stage because of it ensuing issues with the plane and the power plant but it was actually designed from the outset on the on the uh, the drawing board um, to actually be an interceptor and not an experimental aircraft. It was a it was a proper designed fighter with m machine guns. Um, the first ever prototype, which I believe you're looking at now, is actually the glider um, proving airframe, and this aircraft was built in 1941. Um, but when it was powered by a rocket motor, uh, much the same characteristics as the ME163, but the ME163 was probably designed a awful lot better because it actually flew relatively well, whereas this thing had major stability issues and major issues with the engine. Um, the engine had the same problems as the 163 engine, but the engine itself ate through its own fuel tank, the, sorry, the fuel ate through its own fuel tank as well as the aircraft skin, which um, rendered most of the, pr the uh, prototypes completely unserviceable within several test flights. But the Brazniak uh, Azaev Bi-1 was actually the first purpose-built fighter to be powered by a form of jet power plant, in this case a rocket motor. So, we'll go through the boxing history of the kit in question. The kit in question is the Mark E variant, but it, it actually starts off life. Um, in this form. <clears throat> I'll just pop this picture up first. Um, this kit was released in the very early 1990s. I'm not sure of the majority of the release dates on most of these kits because they seem to be released um, over a period of different dates throughout Europe. Um, and they all originate in the Soviet Union. But Air Model is actually a VAC form kit. And the reason why the VAC form kit is on the boxing history is because it is most of the modelers um, well most of the rumors are that the actual injection molded model the mold was actually based on the vac form kits mold um, and it was adapted to uh, to become an injection molded kit and the majority of the parts so i wouldn't say the sprues are actually the same but the majority of the parts from this vac form kit hold the same basic overall shape as the one in the injection molded kits um, and that's why this is actually the first image of the boxing history i've got on this particular kit is because it's pretty much general opinion among the modeling industry that the kit originated from the vac form kit and it was all adapted from that so we'll take that off <clears throat> the first picture i'm going to show you let's just take this off and that off. The first picture I'm going to show you is the VES presentation. This model was actually released in around about 1991 mm -hmm. to 1992. It's very shortly after the VAC form kit was released and VES is a company uh, based in Russia <coughs> who produced the, the, the uh, Brezhnev Zayev Bi-1 as an injection molded kit. Now What's interesting is, is that this kit was the original release of the kit that I'm doing a model inbox review on. Um, it, it's, it's the same sprue, although it is slightly modified, and I'll go into the reason why it's slightly modified at a later date um, as we go through the boxing history. But the VES was the first producer of this particular model. It's also often um, released under a company's name called... Um, Bimodel, I believe. I'm sure they're called Bimodel. 
in, it was released under that name in various different countries around Europe, but VES was the company in the Soviet Union that released the BI-1 as a mainstream model. The next kit that we're looking at, um, I know there's lots and lots and lots of moulds here, <laughs> but this is the picture I'm, I want you to draw attention to. This, is, this picture here is actually the box top of the Pioneer 2 release of the BI-1. And the first thing you'll notice is that on the BI-1's wingtips there are rocket motors. These are additional assistance rocket motors and they were very troublesome and difficult to light. And they were very quickly relinquished with in the uh, experimental program of the BI-1. But they are featured in virtually every release from VES to the last release I'm going to show you in a minute. But they're not a feature of the model that I'm doing the review on, and I'll explain why. If you look at the sprues, it's clearly showed here. You can see in between the fuselage halves, there's four parts here which make up the tip, the tip rocket motors, which go on the wingtips of the BI-1 here. Now, it's the same sprue that's in my kit, but these rocket motors are not included in the model, and I think they've gated off the parts of the mould that produce those parts on the injection moulded process. Um, so that is available with the tip tank, with the, with the tip rocket motors on some releases, but not on all of them. So that's the Pioneer 2. There's the box top on the Pioneer 2. All these models are actually quite rare and difficult to get hold of. So if you do want to build this, this subject, um, good luck hunting one down. There are usually one or two on eBay but they're, they're not there all the time, so they're, they're quite difficult to get a hold of. So that's the Pioneer 2 release. The next release is the Eastern Express. This is the company that generally releases most of the X-Frog kits now, but they also purchase the moulds from VES um, and Pioneer 2. And this is a 1990s release. I believe this is around about 1996, um, but I, don't quote me on that because we're not 100%. Still here, you've got the the rocket tip the, the tip rocket motors here on that sprue. Interesting to but to note that when you see the sprues on my kit, you'll see that those tip tank the tip rocket motors there are definitely not present. Um, also, I believe the Eastern Express kit um, has decals for different options to the one that I've got, which is also quite interesting. I think this is the second. Um, I think it's the second prototype that the rocket motors were featured on. So that's the Eastern Express offering. Next you have the kit that I'm actually doing a review on. This is the Marquee kit. This is, I believe, the only model release that doesn't have the rocket tip tanks on it, apart from the Vacform original kit. But I'm sure that didn't have the tip rocket motors on either. But this is the Marquee model. This was released around about 2000-2001. Um, again, it's the Soviet Union the company, the company's based in Russia. Um, and yeah, this is the marquee kit. I did build one of these recently, a Hawker Typhoon for the Typhoon Buddy build. Um, and it was an X frog kit of the Typhoon Mark 1B. Uh, not nice at all. It, it was a bit of a horrendous build. But there you go. That's the BI-1 from Marquee. Next you have the BI-1 from Micro Scale Design. This is the last release of the present sprue that's available. Um, and Micro Scale Design, again, is the company that they don't have the rocket tanks. I'm sure they don't have the rocket tanks on this one either. So this, Sorry, it's the last two releases. So maybe they blocked off that mould. Uh, maybe Marquis decided to block off that mould because they didn't want to do that particular version. I'm not sure. But that's the Micro Scale Design. Now then. I now want to quickly go through, before we go through the model in box review, I just want to go through some of the options that are available, and then we'll go through the costs as part of the review in a minute. This video is not going to be that long. Uh, the first option that's available, and one that is quite interesting, is a Styrofoam op option, which comprises of two models of the BI-1 on one sprue. Um, and it's an interesting, interesting thing because the sprue is actually a block of styrofoam that holds the two kits together, as you can see under here. 
And then I have seen images of these kits painted up and they're actually quite nice. They look quite nice painted up. The, the reproduction on them is actually quite good. The problem with them is, is that they're one three hundredth scale. So they're tiny. <laughs> they're probably about, I would say, two to three millimetres long, not very long at all. Um, but an interesting option and one worthy of note for dioramas and whatnot. In 72nd scale, there's another company with a completely different sprue. Now, I don't know where the sprues originated from, but the company Mac W. Tad, um, I believe, might be one of two different companies that build this sprue version of the BI-1. Again, there's no rocket tank, uh, no rocket tip motors on the, uh, the sprue anywhere. Um, and I can't see, oh yes, there it is, that's a transparency, one piece transparency there. So yes, that's the, uh, the Mac W Tab 172nd scale option. You can also get it in 148th, and this is the model that all of the, uh, the reviewers in the modeling world are boasting about, because it's actually not a bad option. It's not a cheap option. Uh, we'll go through the costings of this kit later, but this is a 148th scale option from a company called Micro MIR and that's how you write Micro MIR in Russian. Um, I also took a, a snapshot of a sprue on this kit to show you what, the, what, what you get in the box basically because it is quite an interesting offering and the moulds on it look quite good. Um, it has um, attracted quite a lot of reviews on the internet and it is much, much more detailed, obviously, because it's 48 scale, but it's still quite a basic plane. And the general consensus of opinion is it's a basic model because the BI-1 was actually a pretty basic aircraft. The thing you have to remember about it is, yes, it was rocket powered, but it was predominantly made of wood and canvas, <laughs> which, which isn't really conducive to a reliable aircraft powered by a rocket motor, is it? So there you go, that's the 48 scale design. We'll just leave you with a nice image. This is a BI-1 prototype, which is in a, so, uh, a museum in the Soviet Union, which is quite nice. Um, interesting color scheme there, because um, I think that color scheme was added to the aircraft after the war finished. But it's an interesting look, and you can actually see that this plane really did exist. There it is in a museum. Um, I believe this is the fifth prototype. I believe it's in the museum. And it's had its guns removed, obviously. So that's the uh, the BI-1. Now then, I'll just take the uh, the image onto the table. Got a nice image there of a, of a kit that I'll probably be doing a review on sometime this year. I'm not sure when, but I'll get around to that one one day. Um, Right, on the table in front of you, you have the marquee kit. This is the kit that's being reviewed today. Actually, if I can bring this camera up a little bit more, because I like to have a little bit of a better image there. There we go. Is that better? There we go. That's the, the image there. That's that's the actual kit I'm building. I'm going to be doing the review on the building and, yeah, all the rest of it. This is the marquee 172nd scale image. And when I open the box, please promise not to laugh, because it's... It's another one of these kits where the box is massive, but the kit inside is tiny. You have a nice instruction sheet here. Um, nice instruction sheet. Nice decal sheet. We'll go through that in a minute. And there's the sprues. Yeah, lovely. Right. First of all, we'll, we'll start with the instruction leaflet, because we always start with the instruction leaflet. On the front, it's predominantly written in Russian. Uh, but there is some stats and information, background information on the aircraft here written in English, which is which is nice. I like that. And again, you've got a parts plan. Do you remember the sprue drawing I showed you of the um, the kit from Pioneer 2? Note this sprue here has no tip rocket motors on the sprue whatsoever. Um, They've definitely been blocked off, because that's the sprue there. You can see they've definitely been blocked off, but they would have been in the middle. So, that's your parts plan. Quite easy to follow. All the parts are id nicely. And then we go into the construction of the kit. Now, the first thing you notice is, yes, there are nine steps. And there are, there are nine steps, but the majority of the steps only comprise of something like two to about seven parts. 
There aren't many parts to this kit whatsoever, and it is a very basic model, and I think it will build up very quickly. But I'll go through the stages very briefly because there's not a lot to look at, and the, the actual instruction leaflet is very easy to follow, as you can see that. It's all itemized quite easily. So step one and two is basically your bulkhead seat, and two is your, your floor pan pedals and the joystick and step three is to assemble all of that into the fuselage halves and then step four is to put the fuselage halves together and the thing I do want to stress is that I've had a look at the parts on this kit and they do need quite a lot of preparatory work as you'll see in a minute with the sprues but when you put all this interior into place there's no location pins I know it looks like there are on the instruction leaflets, and that looks like a ledge there, but it's not. That's actually a wiring loom impregnated into the mould of the kit's interior. And there are no locating holes for any of these parts. There is a slight ridge here, but it's not fantastically great. And the hole here that that uh, pin is supposed to go into isn't there. And what I might do is I might drill, not drill it through, but drill a dip like a dip in the fuselage shaft to fit it in place and I think it will aid an awful lot of the interior going into this kit a lot better but the kit's interior is pretty crude but I'm going to be honest with you that's pretty much what you got in the real aircraft it was basically a seat a joystick a set of pedals on a runner it was a blade runner that fitted underneath it didn't the aircraft did not have a floor pan and then you had an instrument panel which was bolted directly to the inside of the fuselage. It did not sprout from a, from a floor pan. There just wasn't one in this plane. And then in step five, you fit the wings and the canopy. Again, I'll stress I usually fit the canopy last uh, after the kit's been painted. Step six is a tail impenage. Um, unusual tail impenage there because it seemed to have little like fins on the tail plane. And step seven... Step seven is interesting because step seven involves taking a piece of the sprue, heating it under a naked flame. I usually use a butane lighter and then stretching the sprue apart to form expanded polystyrene pipes. Um, and then you have to cut them to certain lengths. There are clearly viewed there parts one, two, three and four. You have to make several bits and bob uh, bit, several numbers of each of those parts uh, at different varying lengths and then they go onto the aircraft and they form the guns and the aerials the undercarriage struts and little support struts for the tailplane um, you have to also remember that these were definitely on the aircraft because the plane was made out of wood and canvas so there was a lot of support struts involved going on around the aeroplane. Section 8 is to fit the rear um, yeah, the rear tail wheel. And this actually has an option for skis as well, which is involved in Section 9. And you can either fit wheels or skis to this kit. Um, the parts are included for both. So, so, so Section 8 and 9 is basically finishing off and putting the undercarriage into place. Um, and then that would complete the construction of the model. There are a few keys here on the side here which show you um, things you have to do during the kit's construction, um, which is quite nice. And they do give you colours throughout the construction of this kit to paint parts as you're building the model, which again is quite nice. So that's the instruction leaflet. On the back of the instruction leaflet you've got a nice uh, paint guide, and it also gives you a guide to... Um, idea the transfers in the correct place the decals there which is interesting um, yeah there are three definite um, pro uh, three definite versions here the first prototype was the one that was fitted with skis it also was the third prototype the second prototype was fitted with wheels and the sixth prototype was fitted with wheels but the rest of them generally were fitted with skis because obviously a lot of the time in the Soviet Union, especially where the factories uh, reduced to go into, was snow covered throughout a majority of the, uh, the year. The decals on this kit are quite small, as you can see, the aeroplane is quite small. But the register on the decals is actually quite good, and I have used marquee transfers before, and I didn't really have any issues with them. They actually went on quite nice, the backing film was very, very clear. Um, 
and the register on them is very good so I'm quite pleased with that there, there's basically styles there and a few white numbers um, which aren't very apparent but that's that's what's on the decal sheet there so that's the decals quite happy with those now we'll quickly go through the parts I'm going to put my hand into view here so you can see how big this kit is <laughs> it's not very big the plane itself is probably about two-thirds the size of a Mark 5B Spitfire. So that gives you an idea on how big this model is. The wingspan, the tail, uh, the length of the, of the fuselage, everything corresponds to about two-thirds the size of a Spitfire. And the first thing I've noticed when I looked at these parts on the sprue is that they're quite what I call heavily detailed. There's nothing spectacularly fine about the detail on this kit, although... I'm going to be honest with you that the reproduction of a fabric covering on that rudder is not too bad, but I did find that with the Marquis Typhoon that I built. The fabric covering was, you know, the, the actual effect they got with the plastic on the fabric covered control surfaces wasn't that bad. And we'll turn the part inside so you can see the, uh, the inside detail. Um, not very apparent because the plastic's white, but you can just see it there. I wonder if it's better on the other part. The interior detail is actually quite pronounced um, and when that's painted up you'd be able to see it an awful lot better than what you can see it now but there's actually a wiring loom on the side of there there's a couple of runners and there's a couple of what I call uh, now you can see them now uh, what I call ribs that go across the uh, the cross members that, um, that form the actual airframe underneath the fabric covering and that's quite nicely detailed, and I think that will actually come up quite nice with paint. But it is still quite heavy. Um, but it is apparent there. I mean, if you wanted to sand some of that down to make it less apparent and a bit finer, you probably could. But that's, that's the fuselage, quite small. The kit itself is very small. That's only two parts on that sprue. On this sprue, you've got the rest of the 35 parts that come into this kit. It's also a transparency which makes up 36 parts, but we'll show you that in a minute. So basically here's the second sprue which comprises the rest of the parts and as you can see there are quite a lot of tabs, quite a lot of flash, there's quite a lot that needs to be cleaned up on these parts. But what I did find, here we go again, you can just see it on that tail plane, the fabric covering is quite nicely reproduced. The parts are actually quite crisp when you clean them up, you know, they're, they're going to be quite nicely moulded. And I was quite surprised. I wasn't expecting this from a Russian kit. I have built a few Jayco models and a few, um, I can't think of the company's name, but there, there's another Russian company going about um, that build their own models. Um, I'll probably come up with it later. Uh, and they, they all sort of have this format where the parts look quite heavy and waxy, but they're nicely reproduced. And with a bit of preparatory work, you can build quite a nice kit. But I have heard that there are some quite serious fit issues with this kit, um, which a lot of the modelers have had to do quite a bit of work with. But we'll see how that pans out. The cockpit canopy. Here's the cockpit canopy. Again... It's a lot clearer than I was expecting it to be. A lot of Russian-made models have sort of brownish, smoky canopies. I don't know why that is, but it, it does seem to be quite apparent. But this one isn't too bad. Um, it's got quite a nice frame on it as well, which I think will paint up quite nice. So it, that's not as bad as I was expecting it to be. Yeah, I think that will... That'll look all right on the kit, I think. So that's the, the that's what you get in the box. Not much to write home about, is it? I'm not expecting this to take a huge amount of work to put it together, but that that's quite interesting. So that's the Mackie kit. What I quickly want to do now is go through the, uh, the, li the literature that I've written down that might be interesting for some of you. The kit itself is a Marquee produced Berazniak Izaev BI-1. <coughs> Sorry about that. The model's scaled in 172nd scale and its serial number is MQ-7209. The model comes with decals for three versions. The third experimental aircraft, built in 1943, 
and the fourth and fifth prototype aircraft in 1945. I think it's the sixth prototype aircraft, actually, um, but I could be wrong. There are 31 parts on two white plastic sprues and one clear plastic part on one clear sprue. It's actually not on a sprue at all, it's loose. But that com comprises a total of 32 parts in total. And there are also seven parts which have to be made with expanded sprue heated by a naked flame to make various aerials and guns. So that would actually make 39 parts in total if you included those. The dimensions of the kit is it's about three and a half inches long by three inches span and it's about one and a half inches high on its undercarriage. Now the options, um, the problem with this kit is is that there, there are options available. The problem is is that they're all much of a muchness or they're very they're quite specialist except for the 48 scale kit which is quite nice. The Eastern Express Borasnik IS Azaf I'll just call it the Eastern Express option because it's easy to say. In one seventy seconds, uh, sorry, no, I'll start with the one three hundred scale. The one three hundred scale kit is a Dragon's Man Depot uh, BI one, and they cost two pounds seventy four for two models. In seventy seconds, scale you have the Eastern Express option, which is between five and ten pound. The Mac W Tab models they're quite rare, uh, but they can be picked up for between ten and twenty pound. The Marquee BI-1 usually retails for about £7.50 to £10. The Microscale Design BI-1 is about £7 to £12. The Pioneer 2 BI-1, can you can sometimes get it as cheap as two quid, but it usually retails for between £8 and £10. And the VES Models BI-1 is between £6 and £10. The 48 scale option, the Micro MIR, BI1 retails for between 17 and 25 quid. So that's the options available and the costs. The final conclusions are, well, where do I seriously begin? The kit is very, very crude and very heavily molded with a terrible canopy. The canopy is pretty, pretty bad. I'm going to be honest with you. It, its clarity is not great. It is quite clear in terms that you can see through it, but there's a lot of distortion through the canopy itself. Um, and the frame itself isn't as apparent as I'd have liked it to have been. So it is quite a difficult and fiddly kit to put together, and especially the interior parts. Um, there are a few, uh, sorry, there are very few real options, as most of the 72nd scale kits are just the same moulds, but they're reboxed, and I think they look like an adaptation of the original Vacform mouldings, and that is the uh, general consensus of opinion with a lot of the model reviewers. It's cheap, but I would say it's a bit of a challenge to get a good result, but the jury is out on that one because I'm not sure if I'm going to get a good result. Um, I have had a bit of um, experience with marquee kits, but not ones like this, but I have had experience with Russian moulds before, and there are a lot of work, there are a lot of preparatory work cleaning up um, and you have to trial fit virtually everything you put on the plane before you put the fuselage halves together. You've got to trial fit everything to make sure it all fits correctly. Um, but if you do, if you go to all that extent, um, it should go together quite well. I have seen a couple of final reduced, uh, final produced models of the Marquis, the Pioneer 2, and the um, Microscale Design version of the same models. They're all the same moulds, uh, either with or without the rocket tips. And I'm going to be honest with you, they are quite basic. They look very basic. They don't look like they took a lot of work, but believe me, the preparatory work required uh, to put this kit and all the other options together are quite extensive. So um, I wouldn't say this is a kit for your, your novice first time builds. I would say have have at least five to ten kits under your belt before you attempt this one. Marquee do do a lot of other kits, uh, which are X frog models, um, and other Russian uh, renditions of different subjects. But this particular kit, the BI jet fighter, the BI one jet fighter, looks to me to be a bit of a challenge. So that is the inbox review on the BI one. I hope this video has been of some use to you, and I hope. Um, if you are going to tackle one of these, um, yeah, 
good luck and I hope it goes well. I hope mine goes well as well. Uh, so if you like what you like, give me a like. I always appreciate any comments and if you are tempted to have a look at some of my other videos uh, and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. I always appreciate new subscribers. If there are any questions, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, happy modelling and may all your projects go smoothly. Bye-bye for now.